Chris Avalio. Present. Um, and then Phillips is excused, right? Yes. All right. Uh, everyone, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Okay. Um, is anyone on the phone? All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Uh, approval of the minutes from July 14th. There's been a motion to approve by Dean, second by Marcus. Any comment or questions on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. The minutes are approved. All right. Moving right along. Resolution number 59-2021. Um, resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute a memorandum of understanding with Advocate Aurora regarding the terms and understanding between the parties regarding uh, the location, construction, and fiscal responsibility for infrastructure improvements associated with the development of the new Advocate Aurora Hospital located on the parcel northwest of the intersection of Taylor Drive and Union Avenue. Director Beeble. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, what you have before you this evening is... Uh, the result of uh, months and months of uh, negotiation back and forth on the infrastructure improvements related to the, the Aurora Hospital uh, complex being built just west of Taylor Drive at the intersection of Taylor and Union. Uh, with this, the, the infrastructure improvements really are going to entail a complete reconstruction of Union Avenue from Taylor Drive west in front of the hospital complex as well as eastward to approximately, I would say, it's not, not the entire length of Union Avenue East, but it does go um, about halfway towards the, what I would say, Horseman Middle School uh, driveway entrance. The reason it, it goes east of the intersection is there's some major sanitary sewer that needs to be upgraded in order to accommodate the future sanitary sewer flows from from this development. With that, that also impacts the road and the reconstruction of it. Uh, the intersection gets fully re-signalized with actual lane improvements. We're getting additional lanes on Union Avenue for left turn, protected left turns, right turn lanes, so forth, to help improve traffic flow and safety as a result of this. Uh, ultimately, there's a there, this goes back to the original uh, development and there was an intergovernmental agreement between the city of Sheboygan and the village of Kohler, basically uh, laying out some of the terms and conditions uh, of this hospital complex and its impact on, on the neighboring communities, especially the city of Sheboygan. Particularly that the things that affect the Department of Public Works is the infrastructure improvement. So we were tasked with leading this process in terms of ensuring that a sound design was going to be implemented that's going to meet all of the requirements of the traffic impact analysis that's been submitted to us and meet the future development, not only for Aurora, but also we, we took into consideration Acuity's uh, future plans as well. And as you, if you recall, a couple uh, weeks back uh, at, a, at a prior meeting to this, we had an an, an, in, excuse me, a memorandum of understanding between Acuity and the city and some of their uh, impacts in, in infrastructure needed for their development as well. This is kind of similar. Ultimately, that's much more impactful with the a hospital. That's why uh, you have several documents in front of you this evening. The, the one that I guess is probably just gives you a, a, a big overview would be the plan sheets that are color coded that have uh, green and blue basically on them. And what they show is who's responsible for what portion of cost on the project. It's about a, almost a $5 million project with the majority of it being picked up by the Aurora Hospital with around, there's 660,000 that's identified as of today. Uh, that's going to be city, but there's another uh, sheet that's going to be added to this that's adding sanitary sewer uh, that will be additional cost 
that we're going to talk about as well. Uh, the actual memorandum of understanding, uh, we had the city attorney's office review and uh, help draft along with uh, Aurora's uh, attorneys as well. I believe Thomas Cameron, the assistant city attorney uh, with the city of Sheboygan is with us this evening and I guess I'd like to defer to him, Mr. Chairman, if it's acceptable to have him uh, add any additional uh, comments regarding this memorandum of understanding. So I would defer to him at this point. Okay. Thomas, you got anything? Uh, thank you, Director Beeble. Um, so there have been just some minor, uh, minor adjustments to the MOU uh, from the one that was originally submitted in the council packet. Um, they, they relate really to clarifying that Aurora Healthcare is entering into this agreement on behalf of all of the Aurora uh, related entities. Um, a little bit of grammatical cleanup and then referencing the two, uh, two related changes to the appendices as a result of Director Beeble's uh, reference to the sanitary sewer. Uh, that's being done, uh, adding another uh, insertion, uh, another page describing that, and then accounting for that uh, that additional cost. And I believe, uh, Director Beeble, please correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that additional cost is about $110,000 that we're, we're estimating at this point? That's correct. Thank you. Um, so we would, we would recommend that the, the motion first be a motion to amend the MOU in order to bring that, uh, the, the version that was originally submitted in line with that, that final version, um, specifically to insert a new section one, uh, which clarifies that Aurora Healthcare is entering into this agreement on behalf of all related entities, uh, to insert that additional sheet into the grace plans, to account for the estimated cost of $110,000 related to that additional work and to make a couple of grammatical uh, cleanups. I'm happy to, to talk about any of those items at, at more depth or anything else in the in the MOU, if that would be helpful for, for the committee. I've got a question. Uh, Marcus. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, I have a question re regarding the uh, ability for Kohler to use the water to expand their water service outside of for Aurora. Is that a possibility? Have we weakened our position if we sign this document? Can anyone explain that to me? That is actually, it, it's my understanding, it's not part of this. They're, they have a connection on, available to the water main that's existing there. Okay. That is a, my understanding, it's a wholesale connection to the village of Kohler. Mm -hmm. It's not directly to Aurora. So the village of Kohler then will, through their water rates, will back charge then Aurora through their metering process as well. Again, this isn't my area, that would be the water utility. But again, we do currently have a wholesale water agreement with the village of Kohler. We provide water to the entire village as of today. So uh, I don't know if this water main in its location can be expanded to other locations, either underneath the interstate or whatever to provide uh, further water connection at, at some future point. But uh, again, it is allowable though through the wholesale connection through the village that will be providing the service. Thank you. Yep, team. Uh, Director Rebel, I just have one quick question about the, um, the, the extension of Union Avenue, the, the, the improvements. Is this going to be you know, a, a full rebuild, basically, of Union Avenue? It, and I guess my question is, is has it been considered to finish it up to 26th Street so that it would be kind of, you know, because that's going to be like a half a block stretch that's going to be odd otherwise? Yeah, so the... the the project will have curb and gutter. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an asphalt road, asphalt section road, but okay. it will have curb and gutter and storm sewer sidewalks in the improved area. As we get east, again, it's going back into that rural section. Mm -hmm. The thought process is we wanted to uh, potentially hold off on completing that with 
whenever eventual maybe redevelopment of the property to the south side of Union Avenue, mm -hmm. which okay. is ag agricultural right now. Okay. So, um, but depending upon that and timing, that could be that could be maybe a couple of years or it could be decades. We just okay. don't know. And in, in the we realize if it's going to be prolonged, we'll have to put in the capital improvements to then make that what we call that orphan section right in the middle. Yeah. We got to get it completed. Um, I think that's going to happen sooner and later. And I think what we'll start to do is identify it in our next five year capital improvements program, that section to be upgraded. So it matches from the east side, like you would say from 26th street to the new improved section up to about Georgia Avenue. I guess because one of the biggest things that I, I, I've heard from, from residents in that area um, has been, you know, they would like a bike path or something that along that because that is a treacherous road to try to, and, to, and what, a, to connect to that bike and path. I would agree. And what we're, we're looking at in this, as an interim uh, measure is mm -hmm. to maybe place an asphalt path on that north side of Union Avenue, which would be along the school side, I would say. Okay. Uh, okay. Because that's where most of the traffic is. And we would have it off the side of the road, okay. uh, so it's not right on the edge of the road because that it's pretty tight there. So we yeah. would try to separate that as well for safety. Okay, okay, that's good. Good to know. I've got a follow-up question. Sure. Uh, regarding storm water um, management, uh, the storm water that's coming from the village of Kohler is that entering into our storm water system? How is that handled? And are we going to be facing most of the cost of dealing with that storm water? Because I know down at the lake we've been. Yeah. Uh, really focused on the erosion and everything that's coming with that. Uh, actually, the, the, the stormwater is being retained on the site of the hospital. It okay. is discharged, but it's discharged into the town of Sheboygan through what I would say the Lutheran school area. There's some drainage ways and ponds. Eventually, it goes to the Sheboygan River then. Thank you. Any other okay. questions? No. Let me make a motion to approve. Um, make, do you need motion to, to, to get the men first? We well, to, we got to make a motion and then a second. And then okay, we'll I'll second. Motion. Okay, so there's been a motion. Just motion to amend? There's been a motion yeah. to amend to accept the staff's recommendations. As City Attorney Thomas Cameron stated previously. That's a friendly amendment if I've ever heard one. Okay. <laughs> Is there a second on the amendment? Second. There's been a motion and a second on the amendment. Any discussion on the proposed amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the amendment, please state aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. The amendment is approved. Back to the whole document. Um, any discussion on the whole document as amended? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That's approved. Thanks, everybody. 3.2, resolution 60 2021, document 4.4, resolution authorizing. The Director of Public Works to accept a uh, conveyance on certain lands from the Sheboygan Air School District. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this document, as uh, we talked about, this is also part of the same project, right? The, uh, it would be the northeast corner of Georgia and Union Avenue. It's part of the Sheboygan Area School District. And in order to provide a better turning radius at that intersection when it's finally approved, we need some a small triangle of right-of-way, as well as a temporary limited uh, easement uh, to be able to construct this as well. So uh, it, this is, we talked, uh, Ryan Sazma, city engineer Ryan Sazma, uh, talked with the school district and was able to get this right-of-way and easement needed at no cost to the city. Any thoughts, comments from committee members? Motion to approve. Second. I'm going to motion by Marcus, second by Dean. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. 3.3, quarterly reports. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, this is our quarterly uh, benchmarks that we provide on a quarterly basis. For now, this is for the second quarter. And I know it's a tremendous amount of information that we provide from the department. And I guess I don't want to go through this line by line, but I, uh, I'm very proud of all of the efforts from all of our divisions within the department. And I know Mike Wilmis from Buildings and Grounds and Traffic is, is available this tonight 
as well as Ryan Sazma, uh, City Engineering. Uh, Jason Blaziola is available, as, as well as Don Sokolowski, our business manager, can answer any of these questions regarding uh, some of the, the, uh, the data that's included in your report. And again, it's for information purposes. We're always available at any time. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, comments um, throughout, throughout the year, we don't always have to wait for our quarterly benchmarks to come out. So always willing to help and answer and help your constituents whenever an issue arises. So I, I guess I would entertain any questions or then also then specifically I might refer them to specific division heads. Any questions for committee heads or department folks? I've got a question. Marcus? Looks like the uh, amount of potholes um, in tons that we have filled with hot mix, cold mix, or asphalt overlays is down significantly compared to last year and most years before. Is there a particular reason for that? Um, well, yeah, we haven't started our real big paving, so we're still up on Saman same Avenue, and we'll be paving 10th Street, we're going to start working on 10th Street this week, and then Martin Avenue. So those tonnages will, for the overlays, will increase dramatically. This year with the COVID, we didn't bring back very many uh, seasonal workers, and they do the majority of the potholes at this time of the year. So um, we are sending pothole wagons out. It's um, mainly the, the complaints and um, uh, the uh, complaints and ones that we've come across and know were in the previous summers we'd have kids and we would give them routes and go out and proactively look but this year we just haven't done that as much with the lack of seasonals. Thank you. Uh, I've got a couple more questions. Can I just have okay. um, When it comes to street cleaning I just want to say that I have noticed the street sweeper come by my house very frequently and I appreciate it. Um, but uh, can we talk about the backwater calls, what they are, and why there's so many of them compared to last year? Yeah, the backwater calls, uh, when we received the two inches of rain in the, I think, half an hour, it overwhelmed the, the sanitary sewer. And that's where the, uh, with the in, infiltration, excuse me, of the rainwater getting into the sanitary sewer, and it caused a significant number of back backups, but that was due to that main rain event that happened a month ago. Is that something that we should be fixing? The, the system, um, it, the system is, is really, it, it, there's certain areas that we fix and we, we tighten up the system, but there are cases where uh, it's, it's just not designed for that type of flow and that type of uh, event which is a rare occurrence. And if we designed, it we, it would just be far too expensive to reconstruct and design sewer systems to handle that type of flow. So there are, I guess what I would say, it's uh, unfortunate situations that do occur in nature that overwhelm the system. And that's part of the cost overall in terms of managing it. So it's a, it's a decision point made that do we spend millions and millions of dollars to prevent maybe a couple tens of thousands of dollars in damage over decades versus, um, again, trying to reconstruct everything? So that's, that's the dilemma. Uh, it's not uncommon. Uh, this is, it's not unique to Sheboygan. Um, in fact, over the years, especially in the storm, storm sewer system, we spent literally uh, tens and tens of millions of dollars over the decades since 1998's flood that has increased the amount of rainwater that we're able to handle. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty rare for sanitary to get overwhelmed and, and typically either it's uh, a situation where the storm in the water is, is so fast that it builds up and then it finds its way into the sanitary, either through a manhole or a manhole it gets blown off and then it gets overwhelmed. Then we get backups. That's, again, uh, a rare occurrence. Uh, overall, uh, on an annual basis, our backwaters are, are, are fairly low. Thank you. 
Marcus to go. Any other okay. questions? Any other, Marcus? Are you? No. Uh, the only question I, um, how are we doing as far as the um, garbage collection, as far as the, it, I know that, the, that our amounts were higher because of COVID. Uh, how is that going now with this? Is it, is, it, is it decreased? Are we still doing, or, and also how is it going with the new garbage collection system? Yeah, I think uh, what I'd like to do is refer to Jason, um, and he's been really honest. I know the tonnages are still up. Okay. They haven't really come down. But um, you know, I'll let Jason explain. The, 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 it's really been a successful rollout, and can't say enough about the team, Jason and his crew and Dawn in the office, in terms of the amount of calls that we've taken to help uh, explain the system to the public. Um, overall, it's been a great success. But I'll, I'll let Jason explain more. OK. Yeah, we've seen a pretty big increase in the amount of garbage. Um, and with that, too, if you look at, um, when I was looking at this, um, the self-help center or the recycling center, too, the amount of yard waste, we've seen a spike in that with people not working, bringing stuff down to the to the, to the yard. I was talking to our sanitation supervisor who logs all, all the, the daily numbers, and he said he's starting to see it come down a little bit. Um, but if you look at the second quarter from this quarter, which I have here, um, residential credit, where to go on me? Sorry, guys, find my paper here. It, um, we've seen it go up quite a bit, but we, for the most part, the containers have been able to hold hold the garbage. We haven't had a whole lot of cases where people aren't able to fit the weekly garbage in. Uh, recycling has gone up too a little bit. Um, I've been also working with Thomas. Um, I'm working on a letter. We've been tagging um, people with um, who've been using bags. So I've been keeping a spreadsheet of that. So uh, people that have had multiple times, I'm gonna send a friendly uh, letter out to to say, hey, maybe you didn't see our um, see our tag, but we need you to correct uh, the bags on the recycling and if we've had problems with that. So last, what do we have here for? I'm looking at the tonnage. And it's gone up from 2,900 to 3,400 from first and second quarter, 19 to 20. And we're just now starting to see it take back down a little bit. Any other questions for Jason? Can you guys hear? That's, yep, that's it. Yeah. Uh, yes, one final question. Um, how are trees, are tree branches ground measured in dollars? I just don't understand that. <laughs> we, we, the, the branches, what we do is we, we actually hire a contractor to come in and grind the branches. That's what that expense is for. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I don't have a way to measure or weigh the, the branches that the citizens are bringing in, so we can just track the dollar amount. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Any other questions yep. on the performance report? Yeah. All right, sounds good. Um, next meeting, August 11th, seeing that we've exhausted the agenda, is there a motion to adjourn? So motion. moved. Second. All right, there's been a motion second. All those please state aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. We are adjourned at 5.55. Thank you, everybody.